Hi there, podcast peeps. Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupie Podcast, part of the United Wecast Network. I'm Lindsay Hyken, and along with my co-host, Mike Ergo, we're here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective, about living that multi-sport lifestyle, and to share the other random thoughts that pop into our heads. You can follow me and the show on Twitter and Instagram at Age Groupie, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupie at gmail.com. And if you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. So today our topic is G-O-D, God, Great Outdoors, whatever you'd like to call it, um, and how we find our sense of higher self through the sport of triathlon and some other things that we do to connect with um, our higher power. So a little different than our normal show, but I think that you will enjoy it, or at least we hope that you will. So here's our discussion about finding God in triathlon. Hey, welcome back. Podcast peeps, age mm-hmm. groupies, friends of the show. Lindsay, uh, how are you doing? We got a cool topic today. I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited for today and to hear what you're going to bring up. Well, we're going to talk about spirituality oh yeah i know spooky which for some people means religion for some Mm -hmm. people means simply spirituality non-conformist religions all kinds of stuff so this has can i add one thing really quickly uh for some people um their sense of uh you know spirituality and god is the sport of triathlon (laughs) let me just put that out there right now (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just saying. Worshipping the the M dot, the Iron Man logo. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. Cosmic forces. So we're we're gonna try to pack this into what people have been talking about for centuries and millennia into about twenty minutes. So A mini episode on God slash universe slash Iron Man slash we got Buddha. It. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. I think we can wrap it up and, and kind of unravel the mystery for people. Yeah. We'll on the universe's <laughs> mysteries in 20 minutes. Ready to go. <laughs> well, this is, this is something that has a big part in, especially the recovery programs that we both mm-hmm. may, or may not have been a part of. Mm-hmm. So why do you think it plays such a big role in endurance sports? Uh, well, I will say for me, you know, um, Prior to getting in recovery, I spent a lot of time in uh, church trying to connect with like my higher power because I was suffering, you know, emotionally and mentally. And I, I couldn't, I never felt like I didn't really feel God or, you know, any connection in, in, uh, you know, before I got sober in church, I would just sit there and pray like, please, you know, please change this, change me, basically. You were searching, you had, you were... Yeah. I'm, a, I'm one of those people who is a, you know, sort of a searcher in terms of spirituality. I'm, you know, a um, certified yoga instructor. I've done, spend a lot of time doing that. I'm really, I'm really into meditation now. And, um, but prior to sobriety, that was all focused on church, going to church and, It just wasn't really working for me, but I didn't think, oh, I should try to connect with God in a different way. I just thought, oh, God's probably not listening because I'm a piece of crap right now. You know what I mean? With my behaviors and my drinking. and um, It's kind of the all or nothing approach, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that doesn't work, so... Done. Done. (laughs) I was just like, there is a God, but that God hates me. I mean, that was my... You know what I mean? That was my... (laughs) Didn't have this experience in church, therefore God does not exist. Yeah, and I had so much shame, you know, so much shame around my behaviors that I I didn't feel worthy of having a relationship with any higher power or any concept of like my higher self or the universe or anything. So I wasn't able. That wasn't. I couldn't access that because I was covered in shame. So after getting um, sober, you know, I really started my spiritual like seeking in earnest, you know, with a clear mind and recognizing, you know, feelings of shame don't play really, you know, have a part in my relationship with my concept of God. And I think everyone should have their own concept of 
that, whatever that is. You know, I'm not somebody who thinks you need to go to a specific church or worship in a specific way or worship at all, or even believe in God at all, if you don't want to. But for me, I have a, um, I have a belief system um, that works for me today. Uh, and one of the ways, the two main ways I currently tr- tap into my, um, my God is through meditation and through, uh, endurance sports. When I'm obviously when I'm training with other people and we're chit-chatting and whatever, I don't necessarily, I always, I don't know. I always feel the presence of like just that oneness with everybody, like that interconnectedness with everybody and that feeling of like, we're all like, we're all just on this rock together, like just whipping through space, <laughs> that yeah. feeling connectedness I feel when I'm running, riding or swimming, you know, just there's something about that. I get a lot of sense of peace. I feel the easiest way for me to say it is I feel God, but God is like, could be any kind of acronym, great outdoors, good orderly direction. Um, was the other one you said? Group of drunks. Group of drunks. Uh, yeah, you know the recovery community has saved my ass, and so like I get a lot of. I see. I get my messages. You know um, about spirituality. A lot of them from other drunks, right? That are sober now. It's a group yeah. of drunks, or it could just be God. God, you know. I don't know. It could be JC or Buddha or whatever. I don't know. But it's like I feel that. Like when if I'm on a trail run. I mean, I just feel like I'm breathing. I'm connected with my breath. I feel connected with nature. I like, I'm like, look at what God made. Look at this world, whatever, or whatever, you know, I'm just saying God, but I'm something mysterious. There's something that is beyond complete comprehension. I think by humans that makes, that makes it, you know, you, you're in awe of that. Uh huh. That too on, on trail runs. Yeah. On on going swimming. Mm Mm-hmm. Not as much on, on, on bikes, depending where I am. I mm-hmm. guess because I'm in my garage, as you can see. Which is a trainer. Yeah. <laughs> I've never felt God, not for one second when I'm on a trainer. I'll Actually, just tell you that. I, I've, I've felt the presence of God during some serious intervals. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> I remember that. It's, the intervals I was doing is like, all right, finding God 20 minutes at a time on my trainer. <laughs> yeah. I feel like... The, for me, the trainer is more of like a Satan type situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That can be true. Yeah. I'm joking. But yeah, so you, you have that same experience of feeling the presence of something greater than yourself when you're... Yes. For me, triathlon is, is so connected to my recovery and mental health and purpose because it came... All, it came together in when, when I, I stopped using and drinking in 2012 and I was seeking what, what is the purpose of my life? Why am I still here? Mm-hmm. Uh, unpacking shame and guilt from uh, survivor's guilt. When mm-hmm. I came back from Iraq and I had over 20, it was 21 people who died on a deployment from a unit. Holy moly. And I had more people who had completed suicide, died on subsequent deployments. So oh. I had all these like ideas like, why am I still here? I am not worthy to be here compared to some of these guys who died. And so it was a lot of guilt and shame and I needed to find purpose. Mm-hmm. I found that and I found it in the sport of triathlon and I'm, part of it was running. I remember training up for a half marathon on my, and finally feeling safe and good in my own body. <sighs> and then saying, oh, this is, this, it's okay to be here. And I don't need to be completely chemically altered. Yes. So good. It's like, this is, it was revolutionary concept for me because mm-hmm. that was the only way I knew how to feel any kind of relief from guilt or anxiety or, or fear or grief. But then working out, I was able to work out a lot of my demons, mm-hmm. literally in workouts. Right. You know, and, and in some workouts, I actually felt the presence of some of my guys with me, running alongside with me. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Uh, very weird. Very, very, it was it's something that guys, Marines wouldn't talk about. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to really talk about at a, at a church. I'd be going to one. So right. a lot of spiritual experiences in, in the sport for me. Mm-hmm. But I tap into that with meditation. I tap into that 
through yoga. I tap into that through, I guess, moving my body and being fully present even when there is discomfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the big things, I concepts I learned when I was becoming a yoga instructor was the idea of um, calm in the midst of exertion. And so, you know, holding a posture for an extended period of time, you know, your body starts to maybe fatigue a little bit and then immediately, you know, your mind starts going into how long is this teacher going to make me hold this posture, my whatever sore, my this, my that. And yeah, projecting into the future, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th Advising. Yes, exactly. And that idea of like bringing it back and connecting to my own, like my breath, my life source and being in the very moment right then, as opposed to in the future or in the past is a technique I've learned to use in every, like throughout life. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information that I've received, you know, in recovery in sitting with Buddhists and doing meditation that about that, you know, finding that spirit, you know, finding God or that spiritual like center by being in the moment. Being in the yeah. moment completely. Mm -hmm. and that's where it all is. That, mm -hmm. That's where it all is. There's something I liked. I was listening to this yesterday from Tara Brock. She's mm -hmm. a, Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Radical her. acceptance. Of course. Radical <laughs> acceptance. I was looking at that yesterday. <laughs> and she said, uh, she was talking about an experience of giving birth. And I've had a kidney stone, but I've never given birth. But I well, it's as close <laughs> as a guy can get, I think. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> But she talked about the idea that pain is not necessarily a bad thing. In mm -hmm. fact, it's, it's very useful information that keeps us alive. It is, it's an intelligence. Mm -hmm. So the, I think where this makes sense for us is that feeling discomfort, especially in endurance sports or in life in general, we as a society or a culture view pain a lot of times as bad, mm -hmm. wrong. We shouldn't be feeling pain. Yeah. And we should be anesthetized from it. However, yeah. it doesn't mean that things are wrong. Like when you're in that extended yoga pose, you're in a long run, you're in an interval, mm -hmm. you feel like you're dying in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't breathe and your lungs are burning. That's not a bad thing. It's, there's discomfort. So if, if you can let go, and relax into that pain or find calm in that exertion mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be there fully stop resisting you know that pain that's yeah why, that's why i love that's why i love the long course in triathlon yeah because finally i get tired i just give up resisting discomfort and mm -hmm. i'm there and when i can finally be there and allow myself to feel whatever i'm feeling that that's that is it right there yeah. Can't put a price on that. <clears throat> no, and I think that that, for me, I was a little surprised by that, you know, having just done my first full, my my experience in training and, and then in the on race day was more spiritual than I anticipated. I just really thought, oh, I want to check this off my bucket list. You know, I'm on a team where most of the people have done Ironman, multiple Ironmans, and something I've always wanted to do. And... um you want that so, calf tattoo? You want that <laughs> and it's like Josh barred me from getting that tattoo. He was like, <laughs> put that on your body. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have one. Um, you know, so when my when I got injured during training and I was afraid that I wasn't going to make the race or I was afraid whatever, and then I kind of realized like I just needed to go into myself and actually step back from the group training and, and just do what I needed to do. Like I really... I had this moment where it's like, oh, the key right now to me moving forward is to listen to my body, work with myself. I know what I need to do. I'm, I have the like experience. I've been doing triathlon for nine years. I like, I, I have what I need to get through this. I already have, I already possess what I need. And that feeling like I was like, that's a thought like that is for me, that's like a, a higher self or a higher power thought. Like I'm okay. I have what I need. I need to listen 
to myself. Can, yes. Like I post that inner wisdom. Yeah. And I, I rarely do that because <laughs> I'm almost always like, is this thought that I'm having remotely even anywhere near being close? I ask, you know, for external help, which is a good thing too to ask for help. But just that like, oh, I, I can trust my inner wisdom. And I did. And I got made it to race day. And then on race day, you know, you have to be in the moment. There's so many things to um, manage, you know, get yeah. to get through a long course to oh, exactly. get through the day. Anything from a flat tire to, you know, your nutrition falls off to, mm-hmm. you know, you miss that handoff of a Gatorade or a water bottle from a volunteer. And if you're in the moment, you can be paying attention to like, what's going on with everybody. Oh, hey, I need to take some, I need to take in. Like for me, I realized, oh, I'm starting to feel like a little bit dehydrated because I was just paying attention to my body. I was able to, you know, drink a little more, get some electrolytes in there and like mitigate that problem by being in the moment. And anytime that I'm in the moment, I feel that sense of higher power, higher self. Yeah. I think being in the moment is such a big part of spirituality for me because it's not wishing I was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, and if I am just noticing that thought and coming back to that moment and not trying to push away sensations that I don't want, but allowing those sensations to be there, whether it's my lungs burning, whether it's, you know, the feelings of fear, Mm -hmm. sadness or frustration or worry, whatever they are, just letting them be there instead of pushing them away and wishing things were not how they are. Yeah. And then seeing that in a bigger context of what can I learn from this? What, what, is, what is this lesson before me that I can learn from? Because obviously, for me, obviously, there's a reason this is happening and there's something I need to learn here. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Buddhists talk about like, you know, that we have all of these sort of, um, basically it's like delusion, you know what I mean? There's, there's the truth of suffering and then there's all this mind stuff created to kind of distract us and keep us from the reality of what, you know, of, of, of keep us from reality basically. And my experience with Ironman um, distance is that that's an opportunity for us to put us ourselves in a situation where it basically strips all that away. Like the delusion that you have control over things that you don't actually have control over. I can go through any given day and think I have control over like, or that I have should have some ability to like impact traffic or my coworkers or my family or what, like that there's some, I have this hold on to this idea that like I can in any way change these the situation, the people around me, whatever it is. And Iron Man strips that away because you don't, I mean, you have control over what you did to train. You have control over what you're doing right that moment in terms of like whether or not you're pedaling, but all of the other things, it strips what like you have no choice, but to get into acceptance about what's happening right in front of you right then. You show up to race day in Iron Man Lake Tahoe and you know, well, good morning. It's snowing or it's burning. Bear ate all of your nutrition. <laughs> that's right. A bear. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And you say, like, okay, well, this is reality. I could sit around and be like, that shouldn't have happened. Cool. Right. I, I, that is a big thing. There, there's a lot of Buddhist concepts I take along. Like pain, the pain of being born, of getting injured or sick, mm-hmm. the pain of dying. These are all human experiences that we will have, but the suffering of wishing it wasn't so, that's optional. Right. And that's what I think about like, so what, like on a, you know, for example, when you're doing a long training or doing anything, you know, physical for me, that is that opportunity to acknowledge like, uh, yeah, this wind right now is kicking my ass on the bike at the end of that Ironman and I'm it's time tired and I'm a little worried I'm not going to make the cutoff or whatever, but freaking out about that is optional. I could just pedal and let it be, you know? Well, especially that long course bike ride. Uh, 
It takes me about six hours. That's six hours. That is yeah. six hours you have to wonder about things. <laughs> your mind can go a lot of places. Oh, sh- your mind can go. My mind can go a lot of, and I was on there longer than six hours and my mind went all over the place. But, but at the same time, it's like, on the one hand, I had my mind all over the place. On the other hand, like just being out there in, uh, I like that acronym for, for God of great outdoors. For me, just being out there with God, like in, you know, riding and through the vineyards and whatever. On the one hand, my mind would kind of wander and then it would just come back to like, oh my God, look how freaking awesome this is. Look at this. The, the world is amazing. Like, look at these other athletes. They're amazing. You know, it's so beautiful. Just there's so much good. Yes. How can you not feel like it? You're most alive, you know, at that moment. Especially race day for me. I feel that now because I'm not, like we talked about before, we're not jumping on podiums all the time here. (laughs) So (laughs) the way I've seen races now is not as a competition, but more as a production that I look around at the athletes around me. And I say, we're all coming together to create this. Uh-huh. And we're creating this production here and we're bringing all of this, this yeah. purpose and enthusiasm and celebration of, of being alive and being healthy enough and fortunate yeah. enough to be here together. We're yeah. putting this all together today. This is the big yeah. ceremony for it. So, And we've been talking a lot about like sort of like what I think some people would consider a sort of a woo-woo type situation in terms of spirituality, like just, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I meant woo-woo, but you meant woo-woo. Yeah, um, no, I, I like both. Exactly. But I, even for someone who's sort of of a religious uh, bent, I think, you know, you can see that like what you just talked about, like all of these people coming together to sort of celebrate the world that God made, you know, the, the gifts that we were given physically or, you know, that we were able to train and that, you know, we were given the time and the means to do so. All of those things like, um, you know, in recovery, I learned God is everything or God is nothing. And it doesn't have to be capital G-O-D. It just be, you know, God is a word used to describe any higher, you know, being or a higher sense of self. And I, I think that's true today. You know, God is everything or God is nothing for me. God is everything. So that means that like that there is a purpose, you know, to us getting together and it brings, racing. Yeah, yeah. It brings context to discomfort. Context it does. Difficult situations. And it's a celebration of yeah. our life and of the planet. And, you know, it's, it's all of those things together. It's also, a, you can have compassion for people on the race course who are bent over throwing up because yeah. <laughs> their nutrition's and they'll be like, Oh buddy, you okay? I, there's so many people. I remember one guy I passed and he was bent over just oh, oh, uh, <laughs> dry heaving. And you know, we're the uh, spitting out. Uh, yeah. That's the worst. And I was like, you okay? And he, he does, he can't even, he can't even say anything. Right. Kind of barely nodding. And he's just kind of waving me on. <laughs> Yeah, I've been, I've been here. <laughs> just, just go. I'm good. <laughs> just go. Yeah, you know. Oh, speaking of which, I don't. I think I shared it. I don't know if I shared it on the. Speaking of dry heat. <laughs> well, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I was running on um, Ironman Santa Rosa in the dark, you know, we had those little headlamps on because there was no light out there, and I came up upon an older guy who looked like he had you know, lost control of some bodily functions and shorts. There's just dark, just what big stain. You know what I mean? Oh, how did it smell? It didn't smell bad. So it might've been pee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Check his diaper. Like I have to do my, <laughs> I mean, it was like, who? I don't really know what it was, but and he was kind of, he was leaning. You know what I mean? He was doing the yeah. lean way and he was just walking kind of leaning to the side. And, uh, as I came up on him, I said, are you, you know, are you okay? And he's like, I'm good. And I'm like, okay, keep running. And I kind of thought, I don't know if that guy's going to make, I mean, you know, when you're leaned halfway to the side, you got yeah, the like, pants and you got, you know, I was like, uh. and the other day, I don't know what I was looking, how this came up, but I saw a clip from our, from our race then May. And the guy was like saying, we're just waiting for the last, the last guy who's going to make it in the, before the cutoff to come down the chute. Right. 
And this yeah. guy was going, and it was that dude. That's awesome. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sh- he made it. <laughs> he was coming. I was still leaned over, still had pee pee pants, and he was making. I was like, that's <laughs> freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, better to have pee pee pants and poo poo pants. Well, that was also, one of my goals for the race was like to cross the finish line in the time allotted without poo poo pants. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a rough <laughs> look. Which is why I think triathlon suits are a little better than running shorts. They hold it in. They hold it in. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some gnarly race photos of, of marathons where people get the trots. And that's, no, that's I'm not good. a hot look. The one of the advantages to not being a, and we're completely off the topic of God at this point, but whatever. We went from oh, you're God to poo poo. Every God you can, <laughs> you start to feel the urge to <laughs> liquid defecate during a race. See, this is for me one of the advantages of being a very, very middle to the back of the pack athlete is. I'm not going to get the trots because I'm going to stop racing right then yeah. and find a porta potty. Like a grown ass woman <laughs> and use the potty. <laughs> and if I don't make the finish in time, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not crapping myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that should be safe for people who are like, you know, have a reason to keep racing. <laughs> I'm like, this is a hobby. I don't need to poop myself. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just myself for a Kona slot. Well, right. But I'm never anywhere near that. Yeah, so exactly. that's the point. Like, that option hasn't presented itself to me yet. So I can't say I've been in They that. were like, you, if you keep running, you'll get a Kona s- slot. And I had to go, I right, then, okay, yes. But since I'm coming in like, you know, 893rd place or something, who Check cares? Okay. <laughs> if I finish in about two hours ago, I can probably, I can probably get that Kona slot. <laughs> Exactly. And I still have eight miles to run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Back to God <laughs> from, from the poo poo pants. Yeah. Back from poo poo pants to God. There is so much we can learn about ourselves in endurance sports mm-hmm. that that's why I, I love it. And I love the, the times where I don't have any headphones in. Mm hmm. And I'm not listening. I'm not filling my, my head with content mm-hmm. because then there's opportunities for things to show up that I, I've blinded myself to and things that show up that are opportunities to grow, which are always uncomfortable things that I might not like yeah. about myself. Yeah, I agree. And the other thing I think for me um, over time now, which is such a pleasure, is that I've spent more time uh, meditating and I spent a lot of time meditating and, and doing endurance sports and not always listening to headphones. Although I do sometimes, sometimes I just enjoy to put my music on and just go get my run in for sure. But, um, is that now I can go out for like towards the end of my training for, um, Santa Rosa, I was riding alone. I did a couple like 70, 80, hundred mile rides, um, solo and no headphones or nothing, just by myself going up and down and, Kenyatta Road, basically. And one thing I recognized was like, I can be alone with my thoughts. That is, I was going to say, I'm glad you went there because that is incomprehensible to someone like we were Mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah. Not an option at all. No, hell no. I don't want to know. I I mean, prior, prior to sobriety and even to like this practice of doing endurance sports, the combination of meditation and endurance sports prior to that, like it was all fear and loathing in my head, you know, fear and loathing. And if truth and, and reality started to show up, hell you know, no, scary and dumb and dumber, just going, la, 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 <laughs> my ears. I don't hear it. no, thanks. You know? And, um, so that, that, yeah, just being able to like, Go. I, I just spent six hours alone, and I feel great. You know, yeah, I, I had a I, I had a pretty significant day yesterday, and I think where spirituality comes in for me is like we talked about taking the shame and morality out of training, mm-hmm. racing, because something I heard on a radio show I listened to is that sports don't build character; they reveal it. <sighs> Wow, that's good. And it was how that applied to me yesterday was 
I was in my head a lot about it was it, for me, it wasn't a big deal, usually an hour and 40 minute run. Mm -hmm. But I listened to my body and I wasn't feeling it, did not mm -hmm. sleep well, was on that verge. Mm -hmm. The old me would have need, needed to force through it yeah. and, and break my body and, and compromise my health mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if I didn't do that, I was not good enough and I was not worthy as a person. However, thanks to Dr. Tara Brock and I listened <laughs> to Radical Acceptance yesterday, <laughs> I'm just checking in with my body mm -hmm. and knowing that my sense of worth doesn't depend on getting a, you know, running seven miles today. Performance. Yeah. Yeah. My, my sense, my worth does not depend on performance either in training or a race. Yeah. It's, it's how I respond and, and treat myself and other people. Mm -hmm. So I, I turned it into a, a walk for an hour and a half and it was great. I even stopped and did a, a guided meditation. Oh, awesome. Way. And I felt great about it. And, I knew I needed to do that, but because there was a voice saying, you need to take it easy today. And some people might say, be saying, what's the big deal of that, but about that. But for anyone who's this type A triathlete, like we can mm -hmm. gravitate towards being, that's a hard thing to do. If you, if you have that itch, like I got to check that box, I got to mm -hmm. do it. I got to complete it or else, or else what? Right. Or else what? There is just a sort of, dangling or else you know what i mean it's just there like they're really if you say to yourself or else what the answer is nothing or else nothing that's fine but there's yeah. just that sort of dangling thing out there of like i have to check all these boxes and do xyz to um so when the uncomfortable feelings show up then i can say no look i did this see right block them out again because yeah to, to justify i mean for me it's yeah. justifying my existence on the planet i feel like i have to do a certain level of performance not just in sports but you know in all aspects of my life i can i can you know be a very uh driven person and what i'm trying to learn now is like there's good there's good aspects to having drive and that sort of type a sort of personality in training for triathlon and in work and in all areas. There's also uh, a downside, which is, um, so it can you're be- saying this might be dose dependent? Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. It is because I, I can get into this loop where I'm basically doing things to justify my existence. And um, as one of my little spiritual guides kind of tells me, no, no, the fact of your existence is enough justification. You know what I mean? That you get to be here. And I'm like, what? No, come on, what? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I'm picturing, you know, this this old person with a beard, you know, that the typical God figure that we see in cartoons. <laughs> well, Lindsay, you kind of half-assed it on that brick workout. So no heaven for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were sick, but. <laughs> exactly. I think. Yeah, if there is like a bearded guy in the sky, he's like, no, no, the triathlon's there for you to enjoy like all that I created. It's not there for you to like use as a tool, a weapon to beat yourself about the head and shoulders. God <laughs> losing his mind being like, <laughs> you swam in Lake Sonoma. You got to run through f***ing vineyards. How did you not notice any of this? How, are you, how do you have a poo-poo face right now? <laughs> Exactly. How are you not feeling good enough? I let you have like the means and the time to do the trade. You know, I mean? yeah. like celebrate your gifts for freaking once. Did you not notice all of this cool stuff around you, and you still <laughs> you still had a grumpy face. Exactly, and I'm working on being more in the like gratitude side and less in the like what I what didn't happen, what I don't have, why it wasn't fast enough or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. <sighs> Worthiness, acceptance, allowing, gratitude. All these can be found on the race course and in, in, in training and also outside of our crazy sport. Yeah. Meditation, church. You can look into your children's eyes and see it. I mean, you know, there's a million ways to find God. We just happen to find endurance sports to be a primary, you know, means for us, which is cool. Yeah. So I think we solved the mysteries of the universe. 
If you're looking for God, sign up for a triathlon. Get to know yourself. Train for yeah. it without headphones. Train for it out. <laughs> sign up for a race that's longer than comprehension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take more than two hours. Uh huh. And you will feel the fear of God. <laughs> you will. You'll feel, and then you'll feel the fear, and then you'll feel the hand of God being like, no, no, you got this. Yeah. <laughs> and then the fear will come back again. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, you'll feel a little schizophrenic. Like, it's great. Oh, wait, this sucks. I hate myself. It's awesome. Everyone's beautiful. My ass hurts. <laughs> my ass hurts, yeah. I got to air my ass out because this bike seat is uncomfortable. Bike seat hurts, yeah. <laughs> I think we did it. Yeah. All righty. Did it. So, Mr. The Universe Solved, next week. Check. <laughs> yeah. Next week, so we talked about religion. Next week, we'll do all politics. And then after that, we'll do the perfect diet for everybody, right? I think it sounds like a great plan. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks. Lindsay, so much. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Always a thank pleasure you. talking to you. I really enjoy these times we have together. And with you, listeners, thank you so much. Thanks we want to hear for from listening. you guys, too. Yeah. Thank you. We want to hear from you. What do you want to hear on the show? What do, you, what do you agree with? What do you think I'm full of shit about? Right. <laughs> exactly. Thoughts? Share them with us on social media or email us at agegroupy at gmail.com. All right. I'll talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Later. Bye. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the Age Groupy podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken, and my co-host, Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow me in the show on Twitter and Instagram at Age Groupie and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupie at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast because it really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.